Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Supergirl Season 5. We've got some amazing news. This is going out the next day, but we got the official first look at the new Supergirl costume for Season 5. Also, we're going to be continuing onto an article that will be actually featured in another video later this week. We're going to be talking about it because there is a lot of stuff, so I broke it into two videos. And I'm going to be currently away in America for Comic Con. So, yeah, I've got scheduled videos mainly to do with Supergirl until Saturday when we've got the panels, we've got the trailers. I'm obviously going to be there, fingers crossed I can get in, obviously. But I will also be making videos because I've got all my recording equipment packed and ready to go to bring all me to San Diego. So, yeah, that's exciting. But most exciting is this new suit. We're going to talk about some of this article as well. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so let's move on to talk about what you're all here to see and talk about. Okay, so this is the first official look right here. Obviously, it's not like the best quality. It's just phone quality. But Melissa posted this on Instagram and this comes after she revealed at the Apex Legends event with Kevin Smith just a few days ago that she was getting a new suit, that they're getting rid of the skirt due to the fact that in the winter it gets really, really cold. And also, I think they wanted to change the suit because they've had it since the start of Season 1. And I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on the suit, so I'll compare it to the other suit and what I think about all of this and how excited I am. So... I love this suit. I think this suit is really cool. It's very much so New 52. I like it a lot. The material used looks a bit different. It looks a bit more rigid. It looks a bit more like the Flash's costumes in the past. Not his Season 5 suit, but his past ones. It looks a bit more like that. There is a bit more detail on the suit, as you can see. And so, yeah, when you zoom in, you can see the Supergirl logo. All the same. It's got that gold. I think it's... You know, due to the lighting, we can't really see that gold. Not sure if there's as much gold. But on the other suit, you see the outline around the House of L symbol. And it looks pretty much the same right up there. But then, when you look at the actual chest and the stomach area, it's much more detailed. It has, you know, where they used to have red lines, it seems to be just like sort of indents and just a different shade of blue in different spots. So... I think they've lost quite a lot of red on the actual blue part of the suit. But then, as you go up, you can see she's still got the same cape. She's got the red cape, it's practically the same. And it goes over her shoulder. I love that part of the suit as per normal. And moving on to her arms, you can see that there is this cutoff point that looks very kind of armor paddy. But it's obviously just a nice element to the suit. Just adding some lines, adding some sort of texture and tone to the suit. So I really like it. And then as we move down, obviously you can see they've got pants, as Americans say. Which is basically sort of spandex, leather, like very much so the same as what the Flash has. And also Arrow. And I think it looks great. It's obviously a change. I think the colour scheme's pretty much the same. And the boots are practically exactly the same. I'm not sure if they actually stick on past her actual knees, but yeah, I don't know, maybe that's the camera angle. But anyway, so yeah, the boots are practically the same. It's mainly the detail and the leggings that are different, and I really like it. It reminds me of some of the newer iterations. I showed a photo in yesterday's video, and it'll be on the screen right here. And so this is a new suit where she doesn't have a skirt and it looks very much so influenced from that comic book version of her costume. So I'm a big fan of this. I think it looks really good. And that's me saying coming from a point where I think the other Supergirl suit is the best suit in the whole Arrowverse of all time. I think it's impeccable. But I think it's about time maybe we had a change. You know, we can go back to the other suit if nothing turns out right if it doesn't look good but right now it looks really good i'm looking forward to getting our first look in the trailers on saturday but also fingers crossed they release some new posters 
so we get to see the suit in full detail obviously like I said this is taken from a phone so you can't get the absolute detail that you want also a big difference that you can tell is obviously Melissa's hair still in the bangs I like it it you know it may take a bit of adjustment for us because you know all these seasons long she's had the same hair the wavy sort of curly hair and so it's gonna be you know maybe a bit hard to fathom at first that it's you know the same person but it's reasonable lots of people change their hair and it happens okay so let's move on to talk about some of the articles that I would wanted to talk about and I'm going to be talking about later this week I've already got that video up I talk about some of the ones higher in the list but anyway so let's move on to talk about this first question that we're gonna do in this video so why did the monitor save Lex played by John Cryer left for dead after being shot by his sister Lena Luther played by Katie McGrath the madman was suddenly whisked away by the intergalactic being and this is a quote you'll have to wait and see why Quella teases so this is very interesting because she specifically says why the madman was suddenly whisked away so she's saying he's been taken from this place to another place so where has he been taken is this the Alexander Luther of the crossover is it just going to be Lex Luthor instead of Alexander who is his son in the comics he's a massive part in crisis so does he revive him that hasn't been confirmed yet but he's been taken away that's what wished away means so does that mean that he's you know not on earth anymore he's preparing for crisis with the monitor I feel like he's going to be more of an anti-hero because he wants to protect the earth in the end because if he doesn't have an earth he has nowhere to live and he can't take over he can't be the president you know as he wanted to be he can't rule the world okay so let's move on to the next question so this is how will Lena handle the fact that Kara has been hiding her supergirl identity from her now that she knows the truth this is the answer the consequences of that betrayal are going to be a huge journey for Lena moving forward, declares Jessica Coella. Okay, so the consequences are going to be huge. So we all expected this and, you know, the ending of the season sort of teased that. And I think she's going to take a dark path, but she's not going to be a villain. I think she's just going to be very distant and dark at points. She may do some questionable things. But obviously they're going to work it out somehow in the end, most likely. But I think for now there's just going to be some turbulence. Okay, so let's move on to talk about the next bit. So what does Kara face in Season 5? This is the answer. Leaving politics behind, the Girl of Steel is plugging into an even weirder world. We are looking at technology's role in society and how people use tech to escape from reality, says Rovner. It's our Black Mirror season. Okay, so this is very interesting and I think it's going to excite a lot of you that they are leaving the politics behind, as they say. So a lot of you had a massive problem with that. I thought it was very well integrated by the end of the season. I didn't think it was well integrated with Agent Liberty and his Mad Men. I think that was just really kind of funny that you know they were sort of punching their fists all the time in the air being like roach 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 you guys know i think that's ridiculous as to how they portrayed them but nevertheless i think it's a good thing that they are leaving the politics behind because a lot of people that was their main problem and i think this you know allows for a lot more story so they're looking at technology's role in society and how people use tech to escape reality so I think this is going to play into Leviathan and I don't think it's going to play into Malafaic because, you know, he's nothing to do with tech. So Leviathan is everywhere. Leviathan is coming. I feel like maybe the organization that's going to be sort of the way into exploring this role of technology. Although I wouldn't say I'm super into the idea of exploring technology's role, I actually don't really know what to expect for it. So... I'm going in with an open mind, but I'm kind of happy they're leaving politics behind because I think season three is the prime example of where there is some politics in it, but it's, you know, integrated so you don't really notice it, but it's there and the underlying and, you know, they focus on a really great story and I think that's what 
they're going to try and do this season. So excited for that. All right, so the last question of this article we're going to be going over is what's next for Lovebird, Aliens, Brainy, played by Jesse Raff, and Dreamer, played by Nicole Maines. Okay, so the answer is we ship them and now we want to see how that relationship unfolds, says Quella, who hints at challenges ahead for the couple. Rainey has a lot of learning to do. Okay, so let's talk about this. So, obviously, I like them by the end. I thought they were really good together. I loved those last few scenes. Excited to see what happens next season with them. They shit them. I thought that was kind of a weird answer that they were using fan terminology, but, you know, I guess I'll accept that. And... You know, there's going to be some troubles as per usual. So nothing out of the blue, just a pretty basic answer. So that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be currently probably on the plane as to when this video actually goes up. And I will be on Twitter, Instagram, and everywhere updating you guys about my LA and San Diego experience at Comic-Con. Going to be recording 15 minutes of each panel very excited i'm allowed to upload that on youtube also i have a trailer breakdown out for all the different shows probably the next day because i have to stay in the hall all day and that's going to be until about six or seven in the evening which is actually like 2 a.m uk time and most of you guys aren't really around for that time so maybe the next day i think is the best time let me know what you think about all of this so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys later Goodbye.